25 minutes before 8 o'clock. Thank you for tuning in this Monday morning. 55 degrees, believe it or not, and it depends on what you think is cold. I think that's kind of cool outside. In fact, I think for the first time, probably since, I don't know, March or so, I think I actually used a heavier blanket than that little thin thing I normally use. Um, there is some upcoming legislation in the Senate that uh, is going to um, perhaps change the way we deal with cyber threats, and uh, we have somebody on the phone who can help us with this. Uh, Nicholas Ahrens is on the phone. He's the Vice President of Privacy and Cybersecurity of the Retail Industry Leaders Association. He worked on the rollout of the European Union and part of the team responsible for the development of the 2012 White House Consumer Data Privacy Blueprint. So he's going to talk to us about um, the upcoming Senate vote on cyber threat information sharing legislation. Let's find out about this. Good morning, Nick. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Washington, D.C. All right. Um, obviously, cyber threats come from everywhere. They come from the kid next door all the way to the, the government of China and, and ISIS, et cetera. Um, is this legislation regarding all of the, the possible culprits? Absolutely. I, I think what this legislation is designed to do is to help companies um, band together and work together to try to fight back this unprecedented attack. I think what you see, whether it's China, as, as you said, or it's the most latest uh, a arrest that was that was a connection between a hacker and a and the terrorist ISIS. Um, you see attackers coming from all walks of life and you know every level of sophistication. And I think. Um, this, you know, retailers and companies across the the economy have to be prepared for that that level of attack. The the idea that a cyber attacker can steal money from you is probably the only way that I really understand how they can harm me. But but the news makes it seem like they can kill me somehow. Uh, is that possible? I mean, can 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 murders happen through cyber? I don't even know how that would be possible. So, you know, look, I don't know about murders. What I will say is that, you know, you don't need to hijack a plane to hurt anybody anymore if you take out a power system, if you take out your water. Oh, so that's uh, how they would do it. You can be in some dire straits. Yeah, you know, okay. I, I think there have been, and there we've seen um, bugs, and we've seen different hacks out there. Um, for example, one called Stuxnet that took out centrifuges in uh, Iran. So you can translate the digital world into the physical space. And I gotcha. think that's, that's some of the physical danger that, that does exist. All right. And that was probably obvious. So it was a dumb question. But, <laughs> but I just, I just, not, I, not at all dumb. I, oh, good. I'm glad you think that anyway. Uh, so what is, do our... So here's the thing I always wonder about. When you're elected into office, do you know as much as you need to know to vote on everything? So do, is there an effort... I mean, do we, gosh, I hope this doesn't sound condescending toward our legislators, but I would imagine if I got elected, there would be some things I, I would need an education on before I voted it. And that's kind of what I'm asking. Do they need to be educated before they make this vote? I think they do, and I think they are. I think there are you know, a whole bunch of folks who are out there to help ed educate um, lawmakers on this. And I think, frankly, that many of them, uh, because of the, the classified briefings that they receive, whether it's through the Intelligence Committee or otherwise, many of them are starting to realize in, you know, that this is the, the next platform for a potential attack against the United States. And we're being attacked every day. I mean, make no mistake, the U.S. economy is facing billions of attacks. Retailers in particular are facing billions of attacks a day. And so wow. I, I think there is becoming a, a growing understanding that cyber really is something that needs to be taken seriously. And you know, even if you're technology, technologically challenged, which some, you know, legislators are, um, that doesn't mean that you can't be informed about what are the ramifications and, and try to take good votes. And in this case, um, this week, it looks like there may be a, an opportunity to do that. It's called the Cybersecurity Information Sharing Act in the Senate. Um, it is a bipartisan bill. It, there's not a lot of bipartisanship that, that's happening in Washington. Um, but in this case, you actually have the entire business community. You've, you have Republicans and Democrats um, and the White House, everybody mostly in agreement about the, the need to do something about this. And the, the House already passed two bills out, of, uh, out on this with more than 300 votes apiece. And it's time for the Senate to take action and um, try to remove some of the barriers to cyber sharing. Because the name of the game in cyber is all about speed. If you're not getting um, 
getting the attackers as fast as you possibly can and right, right. from as fast as you possibly can, you're you're vulnerable. Does each uh, retailer have their own unique technology to help protect their own company, or do they share? It, it's a mixture of both. I, I think retailers have obviously their own systems and their own vendors, so different companies use different vendors. But we are uh, banding together to to try to fight this threat. I think um, last year we created what's called an ISAC, which is really an, an entity, a sharing entity, so that our, our information security professionals can get together and share the types of threats that they see. That's ISP addresses, that's you know, the types of malware that they're seeing and all kinds of, of that information. That's what we're really talking about. We're not talking about anything like personal information, but we're, we're talking about sharing um, and an ounce of prevention on the front end is really um, what we're trying to get to. So what does the, uh, if this is passed, this legislation, what does it um, provide that's not there now? Sure. It, it enables companies, you know, it's funny, whenever lawyers get involved, somehow there are roadblocks. And you'd think this would be a no-brainer that it should be easy to share with um, both the with both other companies who may be seeing the same threats, as well as with the federal government who might be able to actually do something about um, the threat in terms of foreign actors. But it's actually pretty hard um, to share. And we want to, to remove, essentially, some of the liability associated with that um, and really protect companies who are trying to do the right thing and share with each other. Um, but the lawyers are kind of getting in the way at this point. Does it make it easier to um, determine where the, the hacker might be located physically? It, you know, it might. It, it, here's the, the thing is it's about sharing. It's about, it's about allowing companies to uh, provide information that they may not have to each other. And as a result of that, you may be able to, to get to attribution, which is really hard, um, if you have a lot more data points. And I think we, we've seen that in our experience where one company has experienced something, they've brought it to the Secret Service, who says, eh, we, we can't really do anything about this right now. When they go back and they share it, they find out five other companies have seen the exact same thing. Then when they bring it back, they're able to actually go do something about it. And so we've seen that actually happen in our own sharing experience in the retail industry. Do you know, my, my son works in some kind of a, a cyber thing, and I've always, every time I ask him what he actually does, I'm confused. I, I don't even know what he does, but it sounds like maybe this is kind of what he does. It seems like he does this on a daily basis for companies where they constantly change whatever codes are in there, and it takes a long, long time to do these things. It's, mm -hmm. it's not like me changing my password. Right. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit harder than you changing your password. You know, it, it is, it's a daily battle. It's a minute-by-minute minute fight, and it's happening all the time. It's why most companies now have 24-hour command centers. Um, and that the notion that, you know, companies are really on the front line uh, of a fight right now that is kind of a hidden fight that people aren't talking about maybe as much as they should be is really true. And I think, you know, we as a country have to be prepared for the 21st century, uh, and the 21st century is all about digital yeah and yeah every company whether they're a tiny mom and pop shop or the biggest company um, has to be prepared in some way and the only way for everybody down up and down the line to be prepared and ready um, is to actually work together and that sometimes doesn't come easy but it, it is something that we need to do so it sounds like if uh, the tiny mom and pop shop I mean they, they can't obviously afford a cyber team to protect them would they would the answer to that problem be that all the little shops can they depend on a bank or depend on some some government agency or something to be part of their business how does that how do we hook up or you know how, how do you hook up with somebody who can help you well, you know, there are actually a fair amount of these what are called ISACs that are being formed around different industries. So there's a retail ISAC, and anybody, any, of, anybody of any size um, that's a retailer can join that. There, is a, there are a number of different uh, industries that also have them. And then the Department of Homeland Security, I mean, that's part of why we need this legislation is to really remove a barrier to that sharing so that they can set up um, a, a, the ability to share more directly with them and really help out small guys. And so I, I think that's what we're um, trying to do is make sure that everybody along the ecosystem um, is able to get those resources and, and get it at a price that doesn't put them out of business because that's okay. the really hard part. You um, can spend unlimitedly in this space, unfortunately. Do, um, there, I have a website here, rila.com. Is that a good place to send our listeners? rila.org. .org, okay. And wh what is that? What does that stand for? 
the Retail Industry Leaders Association. Okay, and is that where the... Uh, spell ISAC. What are you saying? I-S-A-C? That's right. It's an information sharing entity. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, when are they voting on this? It, it looks like, and you never know with the Senate, uh, but they, they have one vote they need to get through early this week, and it looks like they may take this up uh, in the latter part of the week. So we would ask you know, any listeners to, to talk to your senator and, and say, hey, we want you um, to take a vote on this and vote for this. Uh, Nick, thank you for sharing this with us. It's a little over my head, I'll be honest with you. And uh, I'm, I'm guessing I'm not alone. I'm guessing a lot of voters and, and concerned Americans are like scratching their head like, what? What is this? <laughs> so I appreciate the fact that you helped us understand it a little bit. W- would the, uh, the, the site rila.org um, answer the questions of the layperson? It, we, we have some information um, uh, that, that, that will answer a lot of questions, sure. Okay. Uh, Nick Ahrens, thank you so much for being on the air with us today. It was good stuff. Thanks so much. All right. We'll be right back. This is WOCA. Legally Yours, brought to you by Fuller & Fuller Attorneys at Law. On the air every Wednesday morning at 1030 a.m. with John Fuller, a board-certified civil trial lawyer for over 25 years. John welcomes your questions from business to complex family matters to legal disputes. So tune in every Wednesday morning at 1030 a.m. for Legally Yours with John Fuller right here on WOCA 1370 a.m. and 96.3 FM, The Source. If you're anything like I was, the thought of getting older was the last thing on your mind. But here we are. For me, it started slowly. The lack of energy. Never being in the mood. And when I was, I could never perform at my best. I tried the pills and other treatments with minimal results. And all but given up on my sex life. Then, I found...